Maine Health Watch hand sanitizers have been critical to keeping us safe during the pandemic, but researchers say they've recently detected elevated levels of benzene in a number of sanitizing products on the market. Benzene is a carcinogen known to cause blood disorders, including leukemia. The leading brand Purell and many others had no detectable levels of benzene. CBS News chief medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook reports. David Light runs Valisure, an independent lab and pharmacy that tests drug products for quality. Over the last several months, they started finding benzene, a known carcinogen, in some hand sanitizers. Honestly, I was shocked. It might very well be the most well-known compound that is dangerous to humans. Valisure's chief scientific officer, Corey Kuchera, walked us through the testing process. So this peak represents the amount of benzene that's in this bottle? Correct. And that's high? That's high. In the early days of the pandemic, the FDA relaxed standards on benzene levels in liquid hand sanitizers, according to Dr. Leonardo Trasande. There was uh, an effort to really increase hand sanitizers and the availability. The FDA allowed liquid hand sanitizers to contain benzene in a concentration of up to two parts per million. Valisher tested hundreds of products for benzene. Valisher says of 260 products, 21 from 15 brands tested above the FDA interim limit. The top three tested between six to eight times higher than allowed. Batches of this sanitizer with a baby Yoda on the front contain nearly double the allowable amount. Attempts to get a response from manufacturer Best Brands Consumer Products were unsuccessful. CBS News found the product available on Amazon, who told CBS News it is investigating the products in question. There's no reason for that kind of a product to be on the market. Dr. Daniel Teitelbaum is an expert on benzene exposure. He warns benzene absorption could be increased in workers who use a hand sanitizer contaminated with benzene, then put on gloves that prevent evaporation. There are people who have special risks. It's a lot of healthcare personnel. It's a lot of cleaning and sanitation people. CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook joins me now. So, Dr. LaPook, Valashore filed a citizen's petition. Has the FDA responded? Hi, Elaine. Um, you know, I spoke to them this afternoon, and they said they have received the petition, they're analyzing it, and they're not in a position right now to comment on it. But they said, look, we're going to get a lot of data together uh, before we make a comment. And uh, they're taking it very seriously, Elaine. Well, the FDA relaxed its standards on benzene at the start of the pandemic. Why did the agency do that? And how does benzene get into these products? You remember about a year ago, there was a, a shortage of these hand sanitizers. I mean, you couldn't find them on the shelves. And so what mm -hmm. they said at the time was, look, we're in a pandemic. It's an emergency. So we're going to relax the standards and we're going to allow up to two parts per million of benzene to be in a product. That's in, in a liquid hand sanitizer. Um, that's still not all that much. Um, but what happens is that over the months that followed, uh, there really wasn't any policing of it. Nobody was really looking at these to see, well, how much benzene is really in? I mean, not on any kind of a, of a rigorous, uh, comprehensive uh, level. So Valisure, which is this company in, up in New Haven that is both a pharmacy and they also analyze the, the, uh, the drugs that they're selling, they decided to test for benzene. And, and they were very surprised to find high levels in, in uh in a, in a relatively small number of, of, of products, but they were as high as, uh, instead of two parts per million, they were as high as 16 parts per million. Now, it's not supposed to be there. Elaine, you won't look on the bottle uh, of a hand sanitizer and see benzene written on it. It is a contaminant. And mm -hmm. I asked Dr. Daniel Teitelbaum, who's an expert on benzene, and especially on and benzene absorption from the skin, I said, how does it get in there? He said, well, one of the ways is that these companies, when they're making the hand sanitizer, they need alcohol. And one of the places that they can get alcohol from is a manufacturer who takes crude oil and then does a process on them, and then it, you end up with the alcohol. But benzene can be a contaminant of that process. And that's one of the problems mm. here. I mean, most alcohol, he said, that you get you know, in a drink is, is plant-based, like from, from things like corn. The FDA has recalled hand sanitizers before. How can viewers find out if the products that they have at home have unacceptable levels of benzene or other harmful chemicals? 
You know, Valashur filed a citizen's petition with the FDA, and they can go to that citizen's petition, which is available on our website, a link to it, and you just go down to scroll down the page, and you'll see a list of certain tables that have a listing of all these different companies. And they not only have a list of the companies that have uh, too much, so more than two parts per million, but ones also that were under that limit. Um, the other thing that they have on their website is a link to they, they want samples sent in from around the country, from around the world, wherever they can get them, so they can analyze them. I mean, they went online, they got randomly ver ver certain samples, uh, mostly from the Northeast, they said, but also via uh, certain online vendors. But they would love to analyze uh, samples from around the country. So they're saying, send us your samples. And if you go to our cbsnews.com uh, website, you'll see a link uh, to where you can go to uh, sign up to send them uh, a sample. And I think it's kind of a crowdsourcing, isn't it, Elaine, where we can all work together to try to figure yeah. out how big a problem is this? Because uh, we don't want to make too much of a deal of it. I mean, people I know can freak out thinking, oh my gosh, there's, there's benzene in there, and benzene can cause potentially blood problems, leukemia over long periods of time. Um, we don't want them getting overly concerned about it. And as Dr. Teitelbaum said, um, it does take a lot of exposure over a lot, long period of time. But on the other hand, it is a serious concern. Um, and especially we learned, and I, I never would have thought about this without Dr. Teitelbaum telling me, that imagine you're somebody who uses ben, uh, a benzene contaminated uh, hand sanitizer, and then instead of it just evaporating from your hand and going off into the, um, into the air, sort of relatively harmless, mm -hmm. and instead of you sort of inhaling it or going through your skin, if you immediately or soon afterwards put on gloves, rubber gloves, like the kind I put on at work, mm -hmm. uh, that could keep the benzene in. And so, you know, that's something that I do. Fortunately, I, I think that the, the Purell that I've been using at work, uh, th that the... Um, the sanitizer I'm using at work um, has been Purell, and that one mm -hmm. is one that was tested as having no, uh, no, re no discernible amount of benzene. So that was one good. And, and, and there, are, there are many other products uh, that are popular that also have no discernible level. So that's good. But imagine if I were putting on uh, a benzene-contaminated uh, mm -hmm. kind of hand sanitizer and then putting on the glove right away before I went in to do a procedure, and then it's right. just keeping it inside so it can't evaporate. Right. Imagine that, that absorption over time and how many times are you doing that a day? Um, you know, bottom line, I wonder, John, is there any uh, safe level uh, of benzene? Because some people, you know, might still have some of this in their home cupboards and they might wonder and they might, you know, um, look at the website, but they still may have questions about whether or not um, their own level of exposure coupled with that level yeah. of benzene in that sanitizer is safe. I guess it depends on how much you're using it. Yeah. And, you know, the point was made to us that it, it, there are some articles written about this. It's hard to find that uh, one person concluded there's really no known safe level of benzene. I mean, it is something that can affect your DNA. Mm -hmm. It can cause blood problems. It can, over a long period of time, I mean, many years usually, a lot of exposure workers who are working in plants or people who are pumping uh, gas and, and really exposed to it all the time, uh, that type of a person, not somebody mm -hmm. who's transiently exposed. Um, so we don't want people to get overly worried about this. But on the other hand, it shouldn't be there. As Dr. Teitelbaum said, there's no no reason for it to be in hand sanitizer. So um, why have it in there? And it's up to the FDA right now. I think one of the things I spoke to them about today, Elaine, was, look, there's no longer a shortage of these hand sanitizers. Why don't you roll back the regulations and say, you know, you can have really almost any. I mean, I think the previous uh, right. level was less than 0.1 parts per million. It's now two parts per million, something like that. It should be very, very, very low. And the answer was, well, we're still in the middle of a, of a national crisis. It is an, it is an emergency, and uh, there are some certain regulations that they have to go through and some technicalities. But I said, look, the logical thing to do right now is to say, there's enough of this around. Um, why don't we just roll it back and say, look, you can't really even have up to two, mil, uh, two parts per million because um, it's not being adequately policed anyway. I mean, I think at the end of the day here, whatever the level it is that you set, Elaine, is that it's not being adequately policed. So who is it who's going to go in there and test these things and say, 
Um, look, there's too much benzene in there or too much of something else that we don't even know about. The FDA only has so many people that, that can do testing, and it's being left up to the manufacturers to do it for the most part and then to you know, report in mm -hmm. almost on the, on the honor level. But what they're saying right now is, look, there's a problem, and we want you to go in there and uh, stop, stop this from being sold. And, in fact, that is what happened with the product um, that was selling uh, something with a logo that had a Yoda on it. And uh, it, yeah. uh, Disney said to them, look, stop, take it off the market, uh, and we're going to do our own independent uh, investigation to try to see what the levels that an independent lab comes up with. And I think that was absolutely the right thing to do. I mean, if companies did that, right, mm -hmm. you see there's a problem, they, they, they act on it, take it off the market for now, and then see if they can confirm it, rather than saying, no, it's not a problem. The first thing in fixing a problem yeah. is recognizing that there is a problem. Right, but it all just underscores to me, John, um, why it is that reporting like yours is so critical, so people can even be aware of this I in the first place, because all of these steps that are, are being taken, you know, the public might not know, um, but at least having the information about what is being done and what's being examined and why, I think, is really important when people are making their decisions about what to buy, what to use in their homes, what to allow their family members to use, especially as this pandemic is continuing. All right, Dr. John LaPook, really Really eye-opening, uh, but as we said, we don't want to alarm people. Important, though, for consumers to have that information. Thanks so much, John. Thanks, Elaine. Take care.